Good morning, everyone, those of you in class and those of you who have joined us online. There's actually a lot of noise going on here next to the Bible College. Uh, some program is going on outside. Anyway, um, is that coming in the mic, That all this sound? Uh, I hope it's not disturbing online students. Okay, good, good. All right, let's pray and we will start. Um, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, to learn and uh, to share uh, our knowledge, uh, things you've uh, helped us journey through. And God, even in this course, as we talk about church and ministry administration, organization, we pray that uh, these things, Lord, will be useful uh, to each one who uh, goes through this class, this course, and uh, may it be useful to their ministries. We ask for the Holy Spirit to give us the wisdom we need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we have been, we are talking about church and ministry administration. You know, this is uh, the practical side of ministry. Um, three years, you've been learning uh, spiritual things, Bible spiritual topics. Uh, this is uh, one of those practical topics that uh, we are covering. But also, it is something very important, especially when you are starting your church ministry, how to run, how to run your ministry, how to run the church. So uh, we, uh, let me just uh, share the PDF first, and uh, we will start. Oh, what happened? Lesson five. I want to share this. <clears throat> so, all right. So let's go to lesson five in our notes. I'm just sharing that. Um, we started talking about this last week. Um, where I was trying to, where we were, we were talk, talking about having policies, guidelines, and standards. And um, some of these policies have we have learned over time through mistakes uh, or through experiences. I, you know, it doesn't always have to be a mistake, but it is through experience. You go through various things, and then you realize you need some policy. So, for example, uh, you know, for example, um, in the beginning, in the early days. Um, there used to be a lot of churches and ministries who will come to us and say, you know, we are having a conference in the city, we are having a program in the city, we want to do publicity it at APC. Can we give out flyers? Can we give out, you know, what they want to promote? They want to promote that event in at APC. Uh, in those early days, yeah, we said, yeah, yeah, come, come, you do what you want. Like, you know, we we, we gave them permission. But then we, we realized that it was becoming a distraction. Sunday morning, so imagine Sunday morning. What happened? Something happened? Oh, OK. Uh, so imagine Sunday morning when people are coming to church. Uh, as they're coming, somebody standing and giving out flyers, some other meeting. You know. So of course, there are a lot of churches and a lot of organizations that are having Good meetings, good conferences in the city. We're not saying anything, those, it is wrong. But we're just trying to imagine in terms of the congregation. Congregation are coming to church on Sunday. to They, they want to worship, pray, listen to the word, and fellowship with people and go. But when they're coming and people are giving flyers, you know, sometimes if there are two, three organizations, they're all promoting their event, giving flyers. People are coming in. They are distracted by it. Then inside the church, on the seats, everyone flyers are being left. You know, so that was a problem. And then sometimes on the way out, uh, after the service, the hall auditorium is dirty because lots of flyers are there. And in many cases, we are renting. Uh, we are uh, renting our auditorium, so we have to leave it clean. 
you know so if there are flyers uh, and then outside there'll be flyers because uh, there are people have taken they've thrown it here and there but we are responsible because we are renting the place so then it becomes our our headache we have to clean up but some organizations have come they want to promote their event and they have done that another experience i had was when we had was you know sometimes people say can we do a presentation so i still remember and this was from a very good christian organization at the head of the organization i want five minutes to make a presentation i said okay and this was in the early days i said okay we will give you five minutes like during announcement time you come you make your presentation about their ministry and uh, inform he was going on for 15 minutes i was sitting there i said hey he told me five minutes but now how, how i can stop him 15 minutes he's going on talking he's making some presentation about their organization thing uh, you know they basically they're promoting and they're collecting funds but now i am stuck and we're all having everybody has to sit and listen then i realized see we need some policy we need we need a policy that will be uniform for all whoever wants to come and do promotion of their event or their organization at apc we need a policy that will be fair to everyone and at the same time it will not uh, make it unpleasant for our congregation people right when people are coming on sunday so when they come on sunday what do they what, what do they want to do they want to quietly worship they want to pray listen to the word and go quietly some announcement is okay but uh, when it is all like this is very disruptive so then we made a policy like many years ago after all this these experiences after going through all this and we said okay we have a promotion policy and it is written there it's put up on our website you know apcwrg slash guidelines it's a written policy where we say so anybody from any organization or church they come to us and say we want to promote our event or ministry at apc we will follow the same policy for everybody it's uniform be fair to everyone one is no giving flyers no handbills nothing we will not don't put it on the chairs don't give it by because after that we only have to clean up so not second we will not put we will not allow you to make any live thing no because sometimes you give five minutes they'll take 15 minutes no we will not play any videos our video announcements only for apc announcement and that too we there only five minutes so even we are very strict with our people like you know announcement must be only for five minutes sometimes it may when you're doing some re report seven minutes but not more than that. so even for our own announcement very strict so we don't let anybody else do that we say what you want if you want to do you can come you bring your own table you bring your own uh, whatever you want you keep it outside when people are going out okay you give your handbill you do your thing whatever you want you keep your own table you do your promotion but don't mess up the place because uh, we are renting the place right if we mess it up then if the college gets angry with the you know as they will send us out they other people won't it will not affect them so uniform policy so anybody asks you so see we have uniform policy one we'll only give you one sunday Right? Not more than one Sunday. Otherwise, they'll come and keep, keep a table every Sunday, keep promoting. So one Sunday you can come, you put your table, you do you promote your event or your organization, it's fine. But do it in a way that does not uh, you know dirty the place and spoil the place. Okay, fine. So same thing we follow. So whoever comes, we have a policy. This is how we, you can promote your event at APC. And you can do it in any of our locations in Bangalore. It's up to you. You come on Sunday, you do it. Yeah. So why is it important? So that uh, you know we take care of the congregation, and we are also being fair to all churches and ministries. We will give them the same answer. So it doesn't matter if it's a very big ministry or somebody small. Same answer. You do the same thing for everyone. Be fair to everybody. Right. So all this is written down so that. Uh, whoever, if they ask me, they ask another pastor, they ask uh, our you know reception, or they ask Stephen Joe's, answer will be the same answer. Same, we'll give the same answer. You know, so it's all written down. 
we have understood that. so like through that uh, we have different policies like how we should respond to different situations so we uh, you know just giving it so everything must be written and available so all this is written down in our church website it's available and so on bottom of page 16 we also have administrative policy administrative policies means for how we treat our own staff our church people those who are working for church right again this is all written down so i will share example i'll share our staff so we have what is called as a staff and consultant guidelines okay pdf i'm sharing the pdf oh okay i forgot to put this on uh, google classroom i will put it on the google classroom i'll put on google classroom afterwards you can share it okay you can take it and it's also up on our, our website apcw.org slash guidelines right so we have a document where it is our staff and consultant guidelines so we have staff those are full-time and then we have those who are consultants who are working hourly for the church and we have these guidelines for all of them same thing for all right and everything is written down so before a person joins apc uh, we give them an offer letter so same procedure we give them an offer letter we give them a role description i mean this is your role what you're going to do and we give them the same staff guidelines so we tell them you please read this are you okay with all this if you're okay you sign before joining right so they before joining they have to accept our staff guidelines right so in our staff guidelines we tell them you know what are our core values uh what is our code of conduct you know uh so you know how you have to conduct yourself um resignation termination so if you want to leave you have to give us one month's notice if we have to terminate you we have to give you one month's notice like that from both sides you know? unless there is some um, uh, really bad something bad happens then uh, you know then we can terminate immediately right so that time we won't give 30 days you know so now it's a stop but otherwise, normally it's 30 days each side. Um, then how uh, work hours? Everybody has to work at least 40 hours a week. And you have to report your hours in our uh, human resource portal. So all the hours are tracked. So everybody does that. From me to all the staff, everybody has to report their hours. How they will be paid. Uh, reimbursements, meaning if you're spending money from your own pocket for something for the church, how you can get that money back there's a procedure reimbursement uh paid leaves you know so everybody has same amount of paid leave vacation that is vacation leave and sick leave everybody has the same thing so all these are written down so there's no confusion now how many leaves can i take i cannot take for as much as i want no no you can't take as you every person every staff has only you know i i think it's one two three fifteen or four 20 days leave in the year how you want to take it when you want it is your 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 freedom but you have 20 days for all stuff right uh and uh i think it is six days of sick leave so in a year only six days you take sick leave. if you go beyond that you have to take it at loss of pay that means you won't get paid beyond those things like that, it is a guideline for all the stuff. We all follow the same thing. It makes it easy for everybody. No, we don't have to keep on checking. You know? What are the benefits? Yeah, we have health insurance for all our staff. Uh, we also have, um, you know, it's called PPF, EPF, Employee Provident Fund, for all the staff. So there's some money that goes into everybody's uh, retirement account. It's, it's required by government. So we follow that. Um, and then some guidance on you know how you should interact with church members you should you know treat them with respect all those things don't uh, you know those kinds of things there uh, every year so we have uh, reviews so you know like I, I would meet with the staff I would meet with the staff every month I'm talking to everybody we will review their work progress uh, every six months we do a performance review that means in June uh, it's a review of their work last six months. Every 
and um, and uh, June and December, six months, six months. And in January, they will get a salary revision if the, based on their work, right? How you have worked last year, January, you may get a raise like that. So it is every it is same for everybody. Nobody is treated different. Only sometimes, if people are doing very good work, then if I see that they're doing very good work, then in the middle of the year, they will get a raise, like in June or something, they'll get a raise. But otherwise, for everybody, it happens in January. Right? Um, and how we have to talk to people, all these things. Um, it's all written down, you know, the thing. So we give it to the people to read before they join us. Before you join, you read this document. Are you okay? And then you join. After you join, you say, I don't like this, I don't like that. Sorry, <laughs> too late. Right? This is how we work. We have certain guidance, certain policies we follow. It is for everybody. Right? Um, so, and I, I, I talk, so I'm back on page 16 in the notes. Uh, staff and consultant guidelines, uh, workplace policies, uh, how we interact with external ministries. So, being a church, we also have to work with other churches or other Christian ministries, organizations. Here also, uh, we follow certain guidance, right? That means we will not interfere with any other church or ministry. We will support them, we will help them, but we will not interfere, you know? So, from example, I give from around the country, you know, there'll be a lot of pastors in church. They say, We want to work with APC, you come work with us, like that. They want to have some relationship. Our response is simple uh, we are more than happy to give you our free resources. We are all our resources are free, we'll give it to you. You can use it however you want in your conference, in your meeting. You can use it to preach, teach, so use it freely. Uh, but you are free to function as you want to function. We are not going to interfere just because we're giving you something. And in terms of financial support, giving finance or working with them, we are very careful. Only people we know, we trust, you know, we will do conferences with them. Because sometimes uh, in the early days, you know, uh, you feel like you sent money, you don't know what they did with it. You know? So over time, we learned that certain ministries, we will work with you. You know, because we trust, we have built a relationship. And so, uh, example, like, you know, there is Shalom Mission, Bishop Devadas in Gujarat. There is um, Vision India from Nagpur. There is uh, Pastor Patsy David from Varanasi. Um, and there's some pastors in Chandigarh, uh, and of course our own outreach pastors. Uh, so certain ministries whom we have worked with, whom we have good relationship, there are some pastors in Pune, uh, some pastors in uh, uh, other pastors in Nagpur also, uh, whom we know, uh, whom we have worked with in the past. So we trust them. We know they are. You know, we can send the money, arrange conferences, go do conferences with them. Uh, we will work with them. And even Calcutta, Calcutta, the pastors there. So like that, with them we will work. Because we have built a relationship and we've you know, gone through. But in some cases, uh, and also in Rajasthan, Ajmer, one, you know, there's a pastor there. So these, these are pastors who... Over, over the years, we have worked and built relationships. But sometimes, when we work with certain organizations, you or pastors, you send the money, you don't know what they did. You don't know, then we say, oh, this bad experience. We can't work with them again. You know? Or they may say one thing and they will do something else. You know? So, example, I'm giving a simple example. They say, okay, we are having a conference for 500 people. So they do calculation of 500 people. We send money for 500 people. Then sometimes 300 people come. 
okay, then we also feel bad. What happened to another 200 people? What happened to all that extra money that we sent? Because we calculated for 500. Uh, they say, oh, they didn't come, couldn't come, whatever. And we understand. But that much money has gone. Now, will they return it? Mostly they won't return it. It's gone. So then when we go a few ex experiences, then we say, okay, with this pastor, we can't work. Because two times we have worked, and both times there has been misuse. So like that, we, we'll still be friends. We'll still, hello, how are you? <laughs> Bless you. Anything free you want, we'll give. Like books and all, we'll give to everybody. But to do a conference with them, we won't. Because uh, two times we did, and it, you know, it mismanagement of funds. So sometimes we go through those experiences, and we have those kind of things. And all the pastors and ministries that we work with, we do not interfere with their own ministry. We will work with them. Uh, we will give them our resources. We will um, do conferences with them, but we won't interfere with their ministry. You, they will continue as they are. So we respect respect their ministry and uh, so on. So that is our how we interact and work with other Christian organizations. Now, many of these organizations will come to us for advice, like, you know, how should I run my ministry? How should I structure this? Uh, what topic should I do? Things like that. Then we will give advice. And some churches will ask, pastors will ask, you know, I'm having this problem. How do I do it? We'll give that. But again, we will not control. We will not say you have to do like this or um, you have to, you know, because we are giving you all this, you become part of APC. No, I think we are here just to help you. We are here just to give you guidance, share our experience. You can use it if you want. If you don't want, it is fine. Right? So that is the way we work, right? With all other Christian organizations in, in the country. Uh, so these are our own guidelines. Right? So any of our pastors will follow the same thing. Yeah, they will do if any any church talks to any of our pastors, they'll follow the same. We'll come and minister, but we will not control or we will not interfere in your organization. And uh, then one last point I want to say is, whenever we rent a place, and almost all our places are rented, we will sign a contract or lease agreement, except for. Uh, like say the school, like Ryan School, uh, which from the beginning, because they know us personally, it is, it is more of a known arrangement. But like all these other places we go outside now, it will be a written document. Um, why is that important? Because suppose I say we go and have a meeting, we say something. Okay, we will give you this rent or something. After two months, they can easily change. Or they say, no, I told like this, we told like this, but nothing is written. You know, So we are very careful. Whenever we uh, enter into any place for renting or where we're going to have our meetings, our services, everything is written you know, and signed. Uh, we don't just say, you, I'll do this, do that. You know? So I have some, I've heard some bad stories, even recently, uh, maybe like two months ago, one pastor was sharing uh, um, in Bangalore. So what happened? There was a person from his own congregation who said, I have a hall. You can use it. Use it for free. He said, oh, God provided. Nice. <laughs> they didn't sign anything. So he went and they spent so much money to do the interior. You, know, you have to put lights, fans, paint, so many things to make the interior to go inside. Okay. So they spent all the money. They're all very happy. Church moved in. Started service. After a few months, man said, I need it back. I'm sorry, I can't give. I need it back. So no rental agreement, no contract. They've already spent money to do all the interior. Now the owner, who is a believer from the church, is saying, I want it back. I want my place back. What are they going to do? 
maybe lights and fans they can take. But what about all the money spent on painting, doing the interior? All wastes gone. And that person who is a believer from the church, they get it for free. And they're getting they also taking rent and deposit, everything. So things happen like this, even within the church. If you don't have a rental agreement, these kind of things will happen. And he was in a very sad place. Like, you know, see, and you're saying, see, I spent we spent so much money. Now they are saying they want it. Where are we going to go? They have to find another place. Where are we going to meet? And then same question, you know, did you sign a contract? Did you sign a lease agreement before moving in? At least one year you can stay and use it. And before, you know, uh, so all those things. So like that, you, it's very important. Before you start using a place, write it down. Okay. So that's part of our administrative thing. It's very important. Then also for how you operate. So we have, for example, for different teams, so at APC we have more than like 25 different teams who are serving. For every team, there are guidelines. So let me just show you. Um, let me just show you this uh, guidelines page, so you will uh, see what I'm talking about. Just give me a minute, please. Um, APCWO.org/guidelines. Let me share this. So let me just share this page and so you'll know what I'm talking about. So um, you can see my screen? Yeah. So apcw.org slash guidelines. So what we have done is, and this has been done like from many years ago, for every team and every activity that in you know, a ministry we are doing, we have documents written for guidelines. Yeah. That means when you're serving in this area, what, what must you do? Right? How must you do your work? How must you do your work? Uh, what are the procedures we follow? And what are those in note? So we've written it down. So as people join different teams, we tell them please read these guidelines. So you want to be part of setup team? Read the setup guidelines. You want to be an usher? Read the ushering guidelines. Why? So that everybody can follow. And do the same thing. You know, so for ushering, be careful about how you serve, you know, how you collect the offering, different things. Uh, um, and then some guidelines, training documents for uh, different um, areas. And the bottom, you see, these are the role descriptions for different roles where we uh, employ people at APC. So all these things are written down. So nobody can say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. For example, set up team. If we say you have to come, it'll two hours before service, right? Because you'll take time to set up. So service starts at eight. You have to be there by six a.m. Somebody comes in at seven o'clock. Say, hey, you're supposed to be here at six. Can't say, oh, I didn't know. No, we're telling you. Plus, it's in the guidelines. No, you have to come two hours before. And if they keep on coming late, then we will say, please, we will excuse you from being part of setup team because setup team is supposed to come here six o'clock. Okay, you be part of some other team that you're comfortable with. But this is our guideline. You have to be here two hours early. Only then setup can take place. You know, especially at central. Other places, uh, you know, it's a little easier. Or um, uh, things like that, you know. Uh, uh, so there are guidelines, and some of, and these guidelines will keep on changing, uh, meaning we'll keep improving it, right? That uh, as we see, as we have experience, uh, we learn, uh, we will keep improving these documents uh, as we go along. Francis, your question? So regarding the volunteering, Pastor. Yes. And the staff also, but mainly for volunteering, like some people will be there, like some churches are there, very less congregation. Yes, yes. So there, like, is a just take the regional churches. So there will be little only congregation if they want to do a, a convention kind of thing, uh, concert, anything. So they will assign the uh, all years. But most of the people are not willing to do like that kind of people will be there. 
so how to talk to them how to handle with those kind of people oh people are not willing to like volunteer so but they are only to do the volunteering no other people but who are is there the people they are not want to do volunteering so how mm. to talk to them in a good way yeah i think um so we need to create so there are a couple of things so one is we need to motivate people So one of the things we did at APC from beginning is we kept saying and we continue to do is every believer is a minister. We try to put that in front of people. You know, everyone can serve whatever way. It's not like everybody is a preacher or worship leader, but everybody can serve. Right? So we try to put it there. So, for example, from uh, uh, when when some so we have this VIP banquet, which is. from the like if somebody is join come to apc new we invite them to come for vip bank but there we tell them look everybody is a minister you can serve find find any place to serve so in different ways we try to put the idea or the the thing that god has placed you in the body for you to serve which is true right first corinthians 12 we are the body every part of the body has some function so you you are have you know it may be in church maybe outside church but you do something for god okay and there are opportunities inside the church which if you want you can serve if you want to do something on your own outside that's up to you right but we try to give them the understanding that every person can serve so i think even in a regional church where the congregation is small if we can give them the that it's a biblical truth right that you are part of the body the lord has a place for you in the church and he has a function for you so find out what that is and start serving so if we can put that into their hearts and understanding they will themselves start serving then second is we have to create the right opportunities so uh, we have to be willing to let go and say okay here's place you can serve here's your place you can you can serve so you create the right opportunities then third of course it has to be done decently and in order so that's where the guidelines come right we can't say serve and do whatever you want no even the apostle paul didn't say that he gave instructions you know for for us in corinthians chapter you know here chapters 11 12 13 14 he's giving guidance to the church how you do different things let everything be done decently and in order so in order to help that happen we have guidelines for every ministry do it properly so creating the understanding giving the opportunity and putting the guidelines that will help people you know uh, do the work and then we have to keep them motivated there'll always be problems you know uh, in every team somebody is misbehaving somebody not coming on time somebody getting angry with the other person every team there will be problems so that is the third part you have to manage that like you have to address those issues like even yesterday i was talking okay uh, about worship team some people are having attitude and also say okay what do we do okay this is how you address you know uh, and uh, sometimes we have to dismiss people uh, from so yesterday we were having discussion yeah okay see worship team some people are not having good attitude they are causing problems okay so we have to dismiss them saying you know we cannot have you on the worship team because you're causing problems to other people this is a team work right so those kinds of things will keep on happening and we have to address that in the, because people are people problems happen but uh, to create that culture i think you can do it even in a regional church and it'll be it'll be great when everybody is serving doing something and then they are able to work and uh, do it well together so yeah so the important thing what i was trying to get across is that you know uh, if we have all these guidelines written uh, people can follow it we can also hold them accountable to those guidelines you know whether it's coming on time i remember you know uh, and, and, and i probably can share lots and lots of stories but i remember there was a time when 
in our worship team, right? So we have guidelines where after you lead worship, you must sit in the congregation. Those days, they lead worship, they'll be all outside chatting. I'm talking about our worship team people. Congregation inside, sermon is going on. Worship team people finish leading worship, they're chatting outside. Tell hey, this is not allowed. Your part, okay. If you're doing two services, morning, eight o'clock service, yeah, they go and have breakfast and come. That we have given them, and we also provide breakfast because they're coming very early to practice. Huh? That we have. But second service, you have to be seated inside and listen to the sermon. So it's a it's a guideline. But those days, they should go outside, just chatting. And then they'll come back at the end of the message to do the last bit of worship. So no, this will not work. You have to be seated and be seated on the front row. Because when I say worship team come, within two minutes you have to be on stage to start the worship. So we set some guidelines. Then we also had another guideline. So those days we saw some people, they'll only come to church on the Sunday they're going to lead worship. Other Sundays don't come. They're not that committed. So I remember. Uh, yeah, uh, we had. I told first. I told our worship pastor. I said, "You need to tell them they have to be here, even on the Sundays, that they are not rostered to lead worship. You have to be here, because this is your church. This is your community. Other Sundays you are listening. You are growing. One Sunday you are up on stage ministering. Other Sundays you are part of the community. You are growing. Of course, if you are traveling and all those kind of things, we understand. But otherwise, you are committed, like everybody else. So we had many meetings with them." Like one meeting, tell them, another time, tell them. Then finally, I call them all to the office. And now these are like not all, not the whole worship team, but the you know six seven people who were called to the office. And these were at that time they were very good worship people, like musicians. Some of them were known all across India, like they were that famous. They were like you say big stars in music side. Christian music, Christian talking about. And they would, so I called them to the office. I said, see, we have told you many times, this is our guideline. If you want to be part of the worship team, this is it. You are expected to be in church. And these were senior people, you know, they worshipers. Straight, had a conversation with them. After that, I think three or four left the church. They didn't come back. But it's okay. Because guidelines apply to everyone, whether you're a superstar or whatever, it doesn't matter, right? If you want to serve in the worship team, applies to everybody. Because if they don't, it sets a bad example for the younger people. Then younger people will also become like that. They won't care. They'll come like big, big shots, lead worship and go away. No, no. So, yeah, so sometimes you have to enforce the guideline. And you have to say that this is for everybody. And uh, sometimes people will get upset and they will leave the church. And that's okay because we have to maintain our standard and apply those guidelines. So those kind of things do happen. And uh, yeah, question? Like a worship team, uh, you told Pastor. Yes. In a certain area, what happens like uh, they are called by some other church. Yes. Not every day, but yes. certain times. Yeah. Uh, maybe for sermons, maybe for leading worship. Uh, what about this pastor? Yeah. So that is okay. Meaning, uh, and this has happened also where uh, our worship team or people in the worship team or even our pastors, are they invited in other places to come and preach or minister on Sunday? It's okay. They just let us know that, hey, this Sunday I'm going there to preach or I'm going there to minister, or lead worship. It's okay. If, and that's perfectly fine, you know, they'll, and so that Sunday we won't roster them, they won't be in church, we know that it's okay, they're ministering somewhere else. But if they are invited to serve long term, like say three months, or maybe even invited to take on a commitment in another congregation, which also has happened, then we say, look, you're free to do it. We're not stopping you, but you make your choice. 
You cannot have your feet in both places. Then you choose if you want to be at APC and serve here, that's fine. If you want to go there, be fully committed there and serve there. It is not, not a problem with us, but be committed in one place. You can't you know, say, I'll be here and there. So if they are calling you to serve there for a, a long you know, months, many months, then be committed there, serve them well, and be a part of that church. Uh, so that has also happened. Some people have gone serving in other churches. Some people have gone and started their own churches or ministries. All that is fine. You know, we just make it clear that you need to be committed to one place, and uh, it's fine. Not a so. Yeah, so these are operational guidelines which we are talking about. And it also helps us when we train new people. If new people want to join, we take them to the same guidelines. Say, please, we all follow the same thing. We all, you know, uh, do this. And uh, so that they, there are the concepts. And finally, also in how different teams work, graphic design videos, we follow certain standards in all our uh, different teams. Um, so, for example, for every Sunday, They'll, the graphic person has to create like 14 different graphics for each sermon banner, each sermon thing, no? 14 of one, because you have one that goes on YouTube, you have one that goes like, you know, on all the different social media, website, church app um, uh, for promotion. So just that one graphic that announces our Sunday sermon, you have to create 14 different sizes and variations. That's just a lot of work. But we have standards for all of that. So they'll just produce it like that. Tuck, tuck. They know everything. Right? Then in addition to that, we have to produce the sermon PowerPoint. And we have to produce uh, the lower third for live stream, what comes in the bottom. So that means every week, just for one Sunday sermon, the graphics person is probably producing, my, this is just my rough estimate, 100 graphic files. But just for one sermon, because all these banners have to go up in all these places. PPT has to be done, graphics for PPT. So if there are, I'm just assuming, let's say there are about 30 slides, you know, plus those things have to be put in a lower third, that means for live stream. So one person is doing this job every week, for every sermon. Okay? And then in addition to that, they will be producing similarly graphics for other events. That are happening so the graphic person is has a lot of work but because you're following standards they'll do it very fast it's the same thing you know the every all the files come out the same way and same thing with the videos we have standards for our announcements we follow a five plus five rule that means there have to be maximum five announcements within five minutes uh, Excluding the intro and the outro. So with the intro and outro, maybe it will go on a little longer, but the five by five rule applies. There has to be a good reason why there would be more than five. Sometimes when they have events, and nowadays we do have a lot of things happening. So there would be, and all these things are planned three months before. So they know, like we have a schedule. So no, okay, next Sunday. So what we announcements are going to come next Sunday was planned three months before because we know what events are happening. So the person doing the video has already created almost everything three months before. He's created the template. Because you know, we know what announcements are going to have to be run coming Sunday. This week, he will release the final video, but if there are any changes, you know, last minute changes, okay, they will tell them, he'll put it and he'll release the video. But the work was already done three months back. Everything is ready. So that's how, you know, the graphic design the video we work three months in advance we get all this put together of course there will be situations last minute some changes happen but it's not a difficult thing it would make the change because most of it is already done in advance so uh, that's how you know we follow these kinds of working standards so that everything is done and we follow you know language and naming conventions how you name your files how you what font, you know, how you name um, the events, everything is following a particular standard, so it makes work easy. So 
that brings us to this question, bottom of page 17, is this legalism? Master, you're so controlling, everything has rules, guidelines. <laughs> uh, you know, is this legalism? You know, are we, you know, creating laws for everything? My response is, it's not legalism, it's just a way to help us work better, work more efficiently, avoid mistakes, avoid trouble for other people, you know, make it easy for everybody. That is why we have all these things in place, so that everybody can be happy working together. Okay? Let me pause here. Any questions from those online or those in class you want to ask? I know we have only three minutes, but... We'll do it and then we can continue next class. Any questions? Okay, so let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back at um, 11 and uh, we will talk a little bit more on operations. I hope you are finding this useful, not finding it boring. So I uh, came to Bible college, they're teaching me. <laughs> uh, but this is the practical side of uh, having a church or a ministry. All right, we'll go for a break and come. Thank you.